All right, howdy. So for today, let's be informal, okay? Today I am just another UTSA graduate. Um, I uh, see you all from UTSA. Um, <clears throat> so a little anecdote. Um, so my, I started taking classes here in 79, so that's a while ago, right? So my banner ID starts with 8,000. I remember when they started banner. When they started banner in the early 80s, it was a nightmare. So we were all trying to register for classes, and it literally took hours to register. Okay, this is before the internet, blah, 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 and before we figured out how to do all this stuff. So for me to register, I sat in the hallway. We were over in Guam Science Building, and it literally took hours for the application to run because so many people were trying to register at the same time. We had totally screwed it up. So there's a moral here, or there's a message. The message is that the big O, not that big O, the other big O, really matters. Or maybe that matters too. The big O matters, right? The order of complexity. Everything I did at Google, every question I answered, and there were a series of interviews, and I'll go through that, every single one talked about the order of complexity. Why? Let's see. But imagine how many users there are of Google products. Billions, right? Who knows? Hey, up there. So, right? But everything matters. So, um, I want to start out. Now, if you've heard me ask this question before, please don't answer it. I'm going to ask you this question. I ask this at every interview that I've given. I've given thousands. Okay? I've given thousands. So, my question for you, and this is only for my computer science applicants, right? How many Mondays are there in a year? Think about it. So the worst close to correct answer is, well, let's see, it's 12 months in a year, four weeks in a month, each week has a Monday. So four times 12 is 48, right? That's a really bad answer, okay? The next worst answer is, well, let's see, there's 52 weeks in a year, there's one Monday per week, it's 52, okay? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, if you're getting paid once a week and they skip that little extra thing on the end there, you're not going to be too happy, right? So what's the right answer? Anyone want to give it a go that hasn't heard me ask this question before? What's the right answer? Anyone brave? Which group to me is not correct. 53 is not correct, but the answer is it's 52 or 53. And it depends on what? Leap year, right? And what? No. What day it starts on, okay? So in computer science, okay, the easy things are not what separate us from the novice programmers, right? It's the tricky things, it's the edge cases, right? Edge cases separate us, okay? I want to know if you're thinking. If you just go 52 weeks in a year, yep, 52, done. That's terrible. If you hem and haw, that's great. Okay, I want you to hem and haw. I want you to think, oh, gee, hmm, well, maybe it's 52, maybe it's 53. Okay, and, and it's perfectly fair to ask me questions. Okay, in an interview, it is not a monologue, right? It's not my turn, your turn, right? It's an interview, right? We're talking, we're chatting, we're communicating, right? Communication is a big deal in an interview. Um, so the best, the best answer, of course, is it's 52 or it's 53, depending upon whether it's a leap year or whether it uh, starts on a Monday or a Tuesday or who knows what. The technical details of that don't matter so much. I'm looking for, are you thinking? Are you trying to find edge cases? Are you trying to consider all the possibilities? Okay? So before I was at Google, so I was there 2013 to 2015, um, they used to do the, the Microsoft interview. Have you heard of the Microsoft interview? The Microsoft interview used to be, they don't do it anymore, but this was famous slash infamous, okay? They would ask questions like this. Ready? Why are manhole covers round? Have you heard this? Who's heard this question? Good, right? It's a stupid question, isn't it? Is this going to decide whether you're a good software developer or not? Hell no, right? But they used to do this. Anyone want to 
try some answers? Yeah. Great. That's one. That's one answer. It's a great one. That's probably the best one. If it's not round, it can fall through. That wouldn't be a good thing. Okay. What else? They have to match. Okay. That, that's not the one I was thinking of. I got two more. Any, any other ones? Less material, maybe. You can roll them. Good one. Right. It's kind of hard to take a square and a chunk, chunk, chunk. Right. Roll it. And the last one is orientation doesn't matter, right? You can just kind of drop it in. You don't have to worry about is it lined up perfectly or whatever. But your two answers are the best two, okay? So Google is known for what? Things like Gmail, Maps, Search, right? Um, but really at the end of the day, what Google is famous for, or, or they're, if, if I had to give one word for Google's success, it would be data. Data, oh my God, do they ever have data, okay? Why do you think they can do deep learning? Why do you think they have smart systems that do AI? Because they got so much data. Oh my God, do they ever have data, okay? This is the big separator, one word, data, okay? So they do data collection on everything. They've got more data warehouses around the planet. They send more, there is more communication between the data centers within Google than there is from the data center to you or me or anybody else, okay? They got these data centers in like Norway and who knows, places where they don't have to pay so much for electricity to keep the darn things cool, right? But they have to communicate. They have to synchronize all those crazy things, right? You don't want two data centers to have inconsistent data. They have so much data, it's crazy, okay? But this is the reason for their success. So they collect information on interviewing stuff. Okay, I'm gonna get into that a little bit here too, okay? So they wanna know, when I interview somebody for a job, I interview you for a job, right? They wanna know whether or not you succeeded. They check to see a year later, are you still at Google? Five years later, are you still at Google? Did I predict that you would be a good employee? And I get judged, okay, based on how well you do, right? If I said you're gonna be great and you turn out to be, eh, that's bad for me. If I say you're gonna be, eh, you end up being great, that's also bad for me, right? They want to see how good of a predictor I am, okay? They collect data on every damn thing you can imagine, right? You see it all the time. The ads that you see are personalized too. It's all based on the data, right? Preposterous. All right. What I'm going to do for you today is I want to go through sort of a sample interview question, okay? I gave, like it says up here, I gave dozens of these interviews um, at Google, so here's the process. Here's how Google works, and it's not unusual. Your first call, you're gonna send in a resume or whatever, okay? Your first call is gonna be from HR. HR is gonna say, why are you leaving your current job? What, what's, where are you going to school? What's your GPA? You know, stuff like that. They may ask you a couple of questions that are they're canned answers, okay? Things that they, they can tell whether it's a correct answer or not based on a key, but they have no clue what the hell that means, okay? They're gonna ask you something simple, two, three, four, five questions, not very interesting, not very challenging, but just kind of to make sure you're not completely lying, okay? Assuming you pass that, which isn't hard, then you get a technical phone interview, okay? The technical phone interview is gonna be a half hour. It would be with a person like me, and we'd use Google Docs, okay? So everything might be on Google Docs. So you can type, I can type. That was tremendously valuable for me. Because a lot of times people have terrible internet connection or, you know, they, their microphone is talking weird and I can't understand what they're saying. Right? Weird stuff happens. So it helped a lot to be in Google Docs. So I would ask you some question like we're going to go through now. And I'd expect you to, to touch, use the Google Docs as your whiteboard. Okay? I don't expect you to use an IDE. If you wanna go off and do some kind of Google search while we're talking on the phone, I don't care. I expect you to. I don't want you to, but I'm prepared for you to do that, right? I wanna know what you already know, okay? You pass that, you get called in for an interview, okay? And that interview on site, you know, again, 2015 is my last contact, so I, you know, maybe things have changed, I don't know. Um, you get called in for an on site and you'll spend half a day You'll typically talk to four people. 
you may have two technical and two non-technicals. Okay, I'm only gonna talk about the technicals today. Okay, non-technical interviews are a totally different ball of wax. Okay, uh, and not very interesting. Okay, don't really care. Okay, so I'm gonna work through a little example. Okay, I do have some blank PowerPoints, but not many. Oh, there's some stuff about me. Um, supporting this idea of everything at Google is big O, the order of complexity. So this first, this first application, I was amazed how many people fit this narrow question. This was back when IE existed, right? They finally killed the damn thing. Um, <clears throat> but if you used IE and you went to Google to do a search, I caught that. I mean, I wrote the JavaScript code to catch that. Um, based on your browser, blah, 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 right? It's not hard, no rocket science. But there is a setting that you can do to change the default browser, okay? They don't really support it anymore. The API is gone, but they did support it. And I would help guide people through that. So it wasn't hard, you know, but it was kind of a cool little application. What surprised me is that number. <laughs> there were 100 million people a day that were using IE and going to Google to do their search. Actually, it was more like 200 million for my peak day. But a typical day was something on the order of 80 to 150 million hits a day. Would you have predicted that? I wouldn't have. I'd have said, oh, maybe 10,000, 20,000. Well, maybe on a crazy day, a million. But actually, a crazy day was 200 million. Okay? The number of users of the Google stuff even back then was crazy. Okay? Second one is the where I spent most of my time when I was at Google. So I was a what we call the SWE software engineer, right? Just a straight up techie guy, right? Same as y'all probably are gonna be in your career. Um, I have been a lot of different things, but I just wanted a technical job and I was just happy to be at Google. I didn't care, right? Didn't care at all. Just get me in the door, right? It was a blast, of course. The third one, um, I did one letter, I added an S, and it literally took months to get that approved through the whole system. As you can imagine, right? Everybody does search. Now, when you type in, let's say you type in AAR, okay? It's going to go out there someplace. It's going to find aardvark or who knows what other words start with AAR. How does that happen? It was talking to the server, right? 200 milliseconds was target time for that. 200 milliseconds, a fifth of a second. Something you can't really easily, I mean, there's a noticeable something, but it's not like a really long pause. 200 milliseconds, that was our target, okay? And that was going over HTTP. And they decided they wanted everything to go HTTPS, which is cool, right? I'm good with that, right? We want everything to be, you know, we don't want open stuff crossing the wire, right? People are bad about that. So this is one more thing. If you type in, you know, some crazy thing, nuclear weapon, who knows what, right? <laughs> you really don't want the whole world to see what you're searching for. Right? We won't go into any other examples because that feels bad. Okay? But, anyways, I, I did that. So, that was my biggest thing. And it took me literally, but let's see, V I, insert S escape colon W Q. Probably 60 seconds, right? Most of the time was finding the actual file to change. Okay? That was the big, but I did other stuff too. It was fun. It was a really great company to work for. Okay. All right, so we've got an hour, imagine, okay? So you walk in, let's say this is an in-person one, okay? That's an in-person. You walk in the door, and I know something about you, presumably I've at least read your, a little bit about your resume. Typically, I didn't like study every word, and you know, I don't memorize it, of course, but I'll go through a resume. Can I do my shameless plug? November 12th, November 19th, Dr. Robinson and I, and hopefully a few others are gonna help you can bring in a paper resume, not an online one, a paper resume, and we will help critique it. November 19th, we're bringing in industry people. We've got HEB, USAA, and SWBC is at least, we're sending letters to them. And the industry people will also help critique your resume, okay? If along the way they decide they want to hire you to, that's great. But their stated goal is to help improve your resume. 
So that's we're being, we're setting that up. Okay. Anyways, we we will uh, as in this interview session that we started. Okay. You walked in the door. Hi, my name is Steve. What's your name? Bob. Whatever. Call me Bob. If y'all been in my classes, Bob's probably not a good example. <laughs> <laughs> don't hire Bob I'll tell you what anyways they'll, they'll be just a little bit there at the beginning where I will try to get you to relax you know I don't want you to be nervous I really don't okay and you you as the interviewee are probably nervous as I'll get out okay you it's kind of a normal natural thing I've learned <clears throat> to not be nervous I don't care right and I learned this pretty early on I learned to just, okay, if I get it, I get it. If I don't get it, I don't get it. I got nothing to lose, right? There's nothing, there's no lose. I don't get an F, right? I just don't get the job, but that's okay. There's other jobs, right? Um, so I, I already am pretty good about being relaxed in these kinds of things. Don't know why, but I am. But most people are nervous, okay? So I'm going to try to get you to relax. Like, here, chill out, chill out, man. We're going to do some stuff. We're going to chat. We're going to talk about some stuff. This is going to be a technical interview. The questions are going to be hard, but they're technical questions, right? And I'm here to help you. I'll tell them that. I'm here to help you, okay? I'm here to help, okay? Some people don't say that, okay? But you should think that they are here to help. Remember, I'm judged on how well you do, right? I want you to do well, okay? Because I want you to do well, I'm going to help you. But here's another thing. This is a little bit more subtle, okay? I love to show off. <laughs> I know the answer to these questions. Uh, you don't. Uh, so it is the case that the interviewer will know a lot about the question that they're asking you, right? Most of them will like to tell you the answer, okay? They will like to, okay? There's some that won't, right? But there's quite a few that, that like to show off how smart they are, okay? Take advantage of that. Yep, communicate. All right. So this first one will only take a minute or two real quick. The second one, we're going to ask you a simple question. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. Is it on my next slide? I think I just have like one more slide. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go through a real one here. Okay. So we have three, three real parts. Now the, the Google interview has a book. Okay. It's an online thing, but let's think of it as a book. Flip through the book. Okay. Oh, I like that question. That book has these three questions, okay? The intro, the main, and then the backup question. It has feedback from people who've given the question, how many times they gave it, what the response was, how effective it was. They got more data than you can imagine on every single interview question. I was not allowed to make up my own interview question on the fly. Weird, right? I had to use one of theirs. Now I can adapt it. I didn't have to use it literally but I had to use one of the authorized ones as a starting point, okay? Interviews don't exactly have to follow this narrow requirement, right? They can go off a little bit, but they can't go totally sideways, right? I can't invent a new question, okay? The main problem is a relatively tough problem, okay? It's designed to take a smart, experienced software developer a half hour-ish to solve, okay? If you do really well, and some people do really well, right? There's some smart people at Google, right? Um, the statistic that I heard when I was there is out of every 1,000 applicants, three got jobs there. I don't know if that's still true. I don't know if that's how many offers they gave or how many actually accepted. I don't know. I just heard that number, okay? So there's some smart people there, right? The uh, My little group, when I, that second application that I showed you, that was the group. There were four of us in the room, okay? Two were from Romania, one was from Egypt, and me, okay? The two Romanians, although different ages, different years, had both competed in the international ICPC, okay? International, they went to China, okay? These are pretty smart people. The Egypt guy, he only made it to the country, right? And then there's little old me, you know? Oof, they're smart people. All right, so, but some people really knock it out of the park, right? They really do very well, okay? So here's, here's the sample question that I just, I just remember this one for whatever reason, okay? Now let's go through this, okay? So don't read everything through, we'll just kind of work it through. 
So here's, here's my typical lead-in that I gave when I was this thing. I'd say, a friend of mine, when he drives down the road and he's bored, he sees a license plate number. He looks at the license plate number and he sees three letters. I don't know, what's M N P or something, right? And then he says, every time he sees one, he tries to invent a band name that's as silly as possible based on that. MNP, monkeys now playing percussion. M and I don't know, whatever it is, okay? So he's always kind of playing that game, right? And he, he enjoys it, right? So let's say we're driving along and we find license plates, okay? Now for simplicity, we're gonna narrow it. We're only gonna allow ABC123 license plates for now, okay? Keep it, keep it simple for now, okay? Now, my question to you is, what do we gotta do to look up to see if those three letters, whatever they are, are the beginning of a word in a dictionary, right? Beginning of a word in a dictionary, okay? So obviously ABC is not, right? But ABA is, like abacus, right? What do you gotta do? I've told you that we're going to have three letters and I've said we're going to have a dictionary. Did I say how we're going to store the dictionary? Absolutely not. And that's intentional, right? I want to see your reaction, right? I don't want you to start scribbling on the board. Right? That's the worst thing you can do. What do I want you to do? Ask questions. Exactly. I want you to ask me. I want you to ask me. Well, what is this dictionary? What do you mean? What does it look like? Oh, good question, right? Well, let's say it's a Python-like thing. You have a keyword and a, and a value or something like that. Or, you know, you tell me, what would you like to have a dictionary? Now, this is an open, this is a free-for-all, okay? Depending upon what you say, you get a different response, okay? The important thing, ask me the question. That's the important thing, right? If you're a software developer, you just go off and you, your whole job or goal in life is to go in, close the door at 8 a.m., <laughs> do your thing and come out at 5 p.m. and have rocked the world. If that's your goal, you ain't going to work at Google, right? That is not the way things work. I don't know of any job that's like, I'm sure there are some, right? There's got to be, but that's not the way to succeed, okay? You have to, you have to ask questions back, okay? So what do you want to do? Have you all heard of it? I don't even know how to pronounce this word, T-R-I-E. Do you know how to pronounce that? Try? Is it a try or a tree? Try? All right, we're going with try, okay? I don't know. We'll call it a try. You know what a try is? A try is you start with, you have all the words that start with the letter A, and then for each uh, letter that follows the A, you'll have another branch in the tree. So it's like a 26 array, 26 not a binary tree, but a 26 array tree, sort of, right? And it's 3D, okay? So if you say, hey, I'd like to do something like that, I say, okay, how big is the tree, right? It's 26 plus 26 squared plus 26 cubed, okay? What's the cost of doing a search? How long does it take? Well, you have to look up the first letter, the second letter, the third letter, three searches, okay? I want that analysis, okay? I'm expecting you to nail that question. Okay. It's designed to be easy. It's designed to like, okay, this isn't so tough. <laughs> I'm good, right? Now, I haven't told you that I'm going to be asking a series of questions. I'm only, I've only told you you have a dictionary and you have a license plate number with three letters, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, I don't know how I'm doing on time. 12.30? Okay. All right. So... This question number one should be fairly quick. Okay, it's hard to get this wrong. Okay, you get it wrong, then we're really in trouble. Does anyone think this is a hard question? I don't think so. But what are the alternatives? Right, you could also store ABA as a. You could use a hash table of some type. Right, the, the key could be ABA, and the value could be the list of words that start with ABA. Right. So there's different things we could do. Right. Maybe we'll explore it a little bit, kind of depends, 
If you take a long time getting to a solution, we probably won't explore alternatives. <laughs> but if you get one just like that, then we'll explore alternatives. Okay. So now we get to the main question. Okay. So now instead of starting with ABA or whatever the three letters are in the license plate, do they occur at any place in that word in that order? Okay. Oof. Wow. Okay, think about that for a second. Huh. That's a good question. Huh. All right. Maybe I need to store the dictionary. Let me think about it. So you start to think about it, right? What, what other way could I store? So let's go with the simplest possible thing. Okay. And that's what I would do. I would say, okay, look. I know there's going to be better ways of doing this thing, but I want to start with the simple solution so I have an idea of a solution. Okay, A solution is better than no solution. Okay, And I'll tell them up front, this is not the optimal solution. Okay, I say, let's take us a big old dictionary. Whoosh. Okay, the entire dictionary. What, let's say 50,000 words. I don't know. That's probably order of magnitude, right? So let's take a dictionary of the English language, 50,000 words. By the way, that's a good question you could ask. Is it English only, blah, 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 right? The interaction's good. So let's say we got 50,000 words. I can go one at a time, right? I can build a regular expression. We love regular expressions, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I can build a regular expression, dot star A, dot star B, dot, I don't know, whatever it is, right? You could build a regular expression. Probably more complicated that because you don't want to, whatever. So you could build a regular expression that matches A, B, A and just rip through, okay? So now you've got a solution. Okay, you can talk about that solution. What's the order of complexity? Well, it depends heavily on the size of the dictionary, right? No longer depends so much on your ABA or three letters, any of that stuff, right? It now depends on that. Now, what's your average search time gonna be? Let's say it's gonna succeed. Well, it's gonna be half the dictionary's average, right? You're, on average, if it's gonna succeed, it's gonna take 25,000 searches. If it's gonna fail, it's gonna take 50,000 searches. This isn't good, right? This is not good. Um, and then you got a second problem. Even if you do find one, do you wanna stop there? Do you wanna find a second one, okay? This is an open-ended question, okay? This is not a, there is a solution, here it is, okay? Um, in everything that we do practically in computer science, there's multiple legal correct solutions, okay? But this gives you a solution, okay? So, all right, so we got a solution. Now, what can we do to improve it? We know it's slow, right? We know it's slow. So maybe at this point, we jump to part three, okay? Part three. So what can we do to make this thing ridiculously fast? What is there, is there something that we could do that would take this, make this and make this ridiculously fast. Okay, but what, but remember we're looking for things that can occur at any point within the string, right? It's, we're no longer tied to the first letter. All right, so remember what I said about Google having lots of data, right? So if, if you tell Google, hey, I need a terabyte, they'll go, here, here's a dozen, right? right? No big deal, they don't care. So let's take our dictionary, okay? Let's take every word in that, uh, you want the answer? I'm gonna give you the answer. <laughs> let's take every word in that dictionary and let's list out every single one of the three letter pairs that, or triplets that can occur in every word. Right? There's a lot of them. Let's say there's, I don't know, let's say there's 50. I don't know. Let's say there's 50 for every word. I don't know what the real number is. It's a lot though. Okay. So every word, aardvark, armadillo, abacus, they each have 50 different three letter combinations scattered throughout. Okay. Can't I pre compute those? Right? Reverse index. Hmm. Doesn't Google do reverse indexing? That's one of their like big shtick things. They reverse index everything. Take those 50,000 words times 50 of each. How many you got? It's 50,000 times 50, two and a half million. 
It's nothing, right? Let's say I'm off by an order of magnitude. Okay, 25 million words. Still nothing. Average length 10 characters, right? Still nothing. We haven't even gotten to a gigabyte yet. Goodness gracious, much less a terabyte. Okay. So now for any three letter sequence you give me, ABA, boom. Here's all the words that have ABA in it. Right? You do this. If you do that, you need to start talking about order of complexity again, right? How much does it cost to do the search? Nothing, right? It's instant, right? What's your cost? Space. Space, okay, a gigabyte, big deal, right? I'm sorry, that's nothing, right? So there's a, there's a further problem. What's the problem with this? Suppose the dictionary is not static. Okay. You have to rebuild this reverse index every single time it changes. Okay, so you gotta create a batch job. You gotta create some kind of a batch job. And of course, Google has whole systems set up for that too. Okay. These are the kinds of things you have to work through, okay? So let me give you a second example. Um, a second interview, I think that's all I have for slides. Not that anyone cares. So here's, here is a second interview question that I got. Now, this was not from a software engineer, okay? But it was still a, a technical question that's perfectly valid. You know what a singleton is, right? How do you create a singleton in Java? So static, right? Just create a static thing in a class, now it's a singleton. Right? If there's only one instance per class, then it's a static thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's a essentially a constant, or not a constant, it's a, uh, it's a singleton, right? There's only one of them, right? If it's a, it's a static field element inside of a class, okay? So now, supposing you wanted to have a singleton across an application. So you have multiple instances of this thing running, and you want to have a singleton value. What could you do? Or you could put it into a file someplace, you could put it into a database someplace. There's all sorts of opportunities. So this is a very open-ended question, okay? This is part two, right? Part one, you answered instantly or ho hopefully instantly, right? Part two is, this is a real question that I, I, I actually was, was asked of me, okay? You could store it in a database, you could store it in a file, you could store it in some other system that would in turn depend on a file system or a database, something like that. Now, supposing you have to, it has to be consistent across the world. But they do, right? They, they, they have to have sort of global, in their sense, truly global singletons, things that have just one value across the world. So now you get into things like, how do you synchronize across servers, right? You gotta have your data in Norway has to match the data in Oregon, right? Um, but anyways, that was another question that I had to talk my way through. So here's, here's the, uh, the summary, I guess, of how the technical interview works, okay? Just a hello, how are you? Relax, we're gonna do some stuff. Um, five minutes to 10 minutes to do a quick question that I hope you're gonna get right, and I'm there to help you, okay? 30, -ish, 30 or so minutes for the real technical stuff, okay? The more questions that you can ask of me, the better off you are, okay? Remember, if I'm answering the question, and I'm the interviewer, chances are I'm gonna answer it right, right? And I'm gonna remember the right answers, okay? Um, and then if you get to it, you get the, the, the sort of the bonus question, that's cool. If you don't, that's okay too, okay? So now we've finished our interview, okay? You go away, right? Thanks, have a good day, nice meeting you. Or on the phone, whatever, on Google Docs, whatever. So now I have to do a summary. I have to take everything that we wrote in Google Docs. If we were on a whiteboard, I have to take photographs. Okay. I have to analyze everything that you did. Okay. I have to judge it. And I have to judge it on multiple scales. I have to judge it on ability to communicate, knowledge of English, whatever. Okay. Um, 
how well of a fit do I think this person would be in the Google environment? Because the Google environment is not your typical IBM bureaucrat wearing ties all day, right? I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't think I ever saw anyone there wear a tie. But most people wear cutoffs and flip flops. Right? People bring dogs to work at Google, right? They, they still wear tags. That's funny. But anyways, um, I have to go through and judge you on a number of dimensions, okay? Other people probably have judged you as well, at least if, we got, if you made it that far to the multi-person interview, okay? All those results are given to a committee, okay? The committee is people who have done hundreds or thousands of interviews at Google, okay? They will review what we did, and then a decision will be made on whether or not to make an offer or perhaps follow on an interview or whatever, okay? They make those, those decisions, I don't. I get, to, I get to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down at the end of the day, but it doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. Um, I had given thumbs down to some people that they hired. I'd given thumbs up to some people they didn't hire. It's okay. Like I said, I gave dozens. Okay. I don't get feedback, particularly on how well I did, right? <laughs> they do, my bosses do. <laughs> and they kept, they kept asking me to do interviews, so presumably I did okay. But <laughs> if they had stopped there, change but that committee doesn't meet uh frequently they only meet like once a week okay so you, you're finished with your day you went through all your interviews and thought man i rocked it i'm going to get a job offer well you're going to have to wait because they don't they don't collect those things up until a week because they have to give me time to do my summary because they're not asking for a five minute review of your work it's typically a half hour it takes me a half hour to do the detailed analysis of what you did and I will, like I said, I will take pictures as we go of your, what you wrote on the whiteboard, that whiteboard, or I will uh, save the Google Doc that we used for the duration of our interview, whatever it is, okay? And I'll actually look through it again. I'll look through to see, okay? Things that don't matter, I don't care if you use Python, Java, prefer you didn't use Assembler or Lisp. <laughs> Thought I'd get some of you on that one. Um, but it doesn't matter, okay? I don't care. Nobody at Google cares, right? The whole concept of the, using this language versus that language is, is silly, right? It's just a language, okay? So we can all read anything, it doesn't matter, right? If I can't read what you wrote, I'll ask you to clarify. What is this weird thing you're using in C-sharp that I've never seen before? Oh, it's called link. What is link? Oh, it's the database connect. Oh, cool. I actually do know what link is, but if I didn't, if I didn't. Right, I would ask. It's legitimate to ask. Um, the uh, I don't know. I guess that's it, really. That's that's the interview process. It's a it's a lot of fun for me, actually. Um, I don't know if you get this or not, but when I am being interviewed, I think it's kind of fun. Um, there have only been a few times where I've been annoyed, right? And that and that's more from the business interviews. And I, sometime in, uh, I don't know, sometime in the future, maybe at one of these meetings, I want to do a um, non-technical interview assist. So let me give you, I still have time, yeah? Let me just give you a couple hints for the kinds of things that I talk about. So I'm switching gears, okay? In a non-technical <clears throat> non interview, almost always the interview is bored to death. Almost always the interview doesn't want to be there. Almost always the interview is thinking about what's going on with the Atlanta Braves and the World Series, you know? They're thinking about anything but this damn interview. I did this is the seventh interview I've had to do this month, and I'm tired of this thing. I wish we'd find some better candidates and blah, 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 right? They're, they don't have anything to ask you. Oh, I see you went to school in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've got a second cousin's sister, brother, who lives in North Carolina. Who cares, right? So here's what I do. I flip interviews, okay, I flip. I don't let them do their, don't just, oh my God, don't draw an org chart on the wall. I've seen so many org charts from people that are bored to death, okay? I hate them, okay? So what I start doing is I start asking them questions, right? You know, like everything from how long you've been here? Why are you here? Why do you stay? Why don't you find another job? What's your promotion potential? How did you get promoted up to the position you're in? Blah, 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 blah. What do you do about disaster recovery? What happens if the whole building burns down? What happens if you get hacked? What happens if you get ransomware? Blah, 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 blah. 
Do you do patents due to intellectual property? How do you protect your assets? Do you trade secrets? Do people, you know, start making crap up, okay? And I start firing questions away at them and they're, they're sitting there like this and then they start poking up. You know, they start to care, right? Because they're starting to think that, hey, you know, you're interviewing me, but man, you're smart. Look at all this stuff you know, right? Because you know the answers, right? And at the end of the interview, the guy's thinking, wow, every answer was right, damn. Well, actually, it's because you gave every answer, right? <laughs> so flip interviews, okay? So there's tricks like that that I use uh, in interviews. And stupid questions, um, you know, what are your three biggest strengths and three biggest weaknesses? Oh, God, I hate that question, right? Strengths, okay, fine, no problem. But weaknesses, chocolate, right? <laughs> and then we move on, right? I try to divert them. Right? I pretend I'm a politician. I don't answer three. But if he really presses me, here's, here's what I say. Well, one of my problems is that I just can't leave work at work. I end up going home, and I end up thinking about problems, and I just can't put them down. And I, I, my wife gets mad at me, and, oh, man, it's, you know, because I can't leave it. It's just, it's just such, you know, you see what I'm doing? Right? That ain't a weakness, is it? Right? That's not, they want people that are like that. They're like, oh, wow, this guy's cool, <laughs> right? So don't answer that question, whatever you do. Don't say, yeah, well, uh, I screwed up the system one time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do anything, anything to avoid answering that question. Pretend you're a politician. Anyways, there's a collection of things that I do. I don't think it would be a whole hour, but it would take 20 minutes, like a half hour. I could do on how to do the non-technical non interviews because they're so different and they're so bad. I've never had a good non-technical interview. Um, anyways, that's all I have. Any questions? I hope you all work there. It'd be great. It's a great place to work. Um, it's been, what, six years since I worked at Google? I still get emails from Facebook asking me to work for them. You know why? Because I worked at Google. They don't know jack about me. They don't care at all about me. They know nothing about me. All they know is I work at Google. And six years later, they're still trying to get me to work at, Google, at Facebook. <laughs> Not going to happen. We did have some questions in the chat. Oh, OK. Um, what would be one of the best academic classes to take to be successful at Google? Um, so I, I would guess that the number one thing would be anything to do with order of complexity. What, what, what class do we have? Analysis of algorithms uh, would be probably number one because it talks about that. So you need to, I don't, I don't care if you'd use omegas and thetas and whatever the Greek letters are, but you need to understand the difference between uh, average case, worst case, which is big O, and best case, right? And we talk about those in, in terms of like sorting algorithms, right? Um, some are, some are horrible if it's already sorted, some are done if it's already sorted. That, so those different kinds of analysis of algorithms, the big O is super, super important, okay? Um, the second answer I would say, and this is not such so specific to Google, but in general, anybody who can say anything about cyber is gonna get a job, okay? If you know something about reverse engineering and you know things like, how to um, audit logs to make sure that no stuff, bad stuff had happened. If you know how to set up firewalls and all that kind of good stuff, you are golden, okay? In any company out there, any company. Um, this, this is the number one worry of most, most people, uh, uh, business people, yeah. Um, so big three meaning like Google and Facebook and Apple, or what's your big three? Would you please repeat the question? Uh, All right. So for, um, the big three, the difference between DevOps and DevSecOps, um, how does it vary? So um, at Google, we didn't have much DevOps support, okay? 
we had a separate development team that did a lot of that stuff, but it was really incumbent upon us to do all that stuff. So we, we used a language. So for deploying stuff, which is what DevOps does for deployment, we had a language called Mendel. And that was a programming language that I can't talk about other than its name. <laughs> it was a programming language used by Google to deploy because deployment at Google is not a binary thing. Okay. It is, Hey, we're going to deploy it to the, the people in that corner of Valley. Right. And then we're going to deploy it to Madagascar and then we're going to deploy it to South America. And then maybe we'll go global and maybe we'll go 10% at each one of those. And then we'll go 3%, I don't know, whatever, 1% and then 10% and then 50%. It's a real complicated thing, but it was incumbent upon us. Okay. DevSecOps. We didn't, we weren't involved in that either, but then again, it was 2015 wasn't as big a deal and it was handled externally. Okay. So I don't know what's happening with them, um, for security stuff, uh, for, for intrusions and protecting our stuff. Certainly it was an issue. We were certainly well aware. I actually worked at Dell for a while. And at that time when I was working at Dell, it was the number one non-government attack site. Dell was attacked more than any other site on the planet except for government stuff at the time that I was there. So of course they cared a whole ton uh, about security stuff. But with cyber, you absolutely can't go wrong. There is nothing, there's nothing that can go wrong with that. If you, if you look at where's the big growth going to be over the next 20 years, that's it right there, cyber, right? Big data and all that, sure. But big data is already, it's already kind of blossoming, but it's also hitting limits, right? We're finding out now that big data doesn't solve all of our problems and it has flaws in it and it's not perfect, but it works most of the time, blah, 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 right? But cyber is still blossoming and it isn't going to slow down. Good question. Yeah, I don't know about the other companies. You know, I don't know what's going on at Facebook and all that, other than they've got a huge problem. <laughs> Google Cloud, by the way, sucks. I don't use it. Yeah. App Engine, oh, Ugh. it's horrid. <laughs> other questions? And you have any other questions from the chat? Yeah. Um, would doing coding problems on websites like Leak Code help prepare for interviews with Google? I, I would say no in general. I would say the preparation that you get from a uh, classroom environment is better than you get on those things. Here's, here's an example. Um, suppose you have a linked list, okay? Linked list, okay? A points to B, B points to C, blah, 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 right? How can you detect whether or not there's a cycle in there? This is a typical question that you'll get on that, right? How can you detect whether or not there's a cycle in that link list? You're not allowed to have extra storage. In other words, you can't, you can't keep track of every node you visit. It's externally. You can't add data. Has anyone seen this question before? If you do, run. Any ideas? Okay, so this is a kind of a typical question that you'll see in those things. So here's here's the here's the deal. Okay. So take two pointers. Okay, advance one pointer one at a time, bing, 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 bing. Add a second pointer and have it go two at a time, bing, 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 okay? Guess what happens if there's a cycle? They meet eventually, okay? When I, when I was asked this question, I hated this question. I got it right, but when I asked this question, it occurred to me, I wonder if I have to care if they're mutually prime, if I can do one and two, or it has to be two and three, or one and three, you know, that kind of question. But I don't know why I thought about it. I was just like, but it's a stupid answer, isn't it? Stupid. If you're doing that, you're doing something wrong, right? If you don't know whether or not your thing has a cycle in it, it's, it's just, and I find that there's a lot of these questions in those things that are kind of trick questions. They're not realistic, okay? If you do hear a question like that, you should say, that's a bad question. <laughs> Give me a better one. <laughs> Give me a better question, right? Is that the, the answer, the question is bad and the answer is worse. How's that, right? Whoever is gonna actually, you know, A equals A points to next, points to next or whatever it is, ugh. B equals B next and just got, ugh, make me groan. 
So I, I would say if you wanted to do something, like, you know what I do think might help though is ICPC, right? ICPC, but that's going to be much more complicated than you're going to get in an interview question. You're not going to get an ICPC type question, I would say. I've never given one. I've never asked one. I've never been asked of one. Uh, most of the questions I've gotten have been relatively simple, like this license plate one. Any other questions from the chat or anybody else? Mm, what are some must ask questions to ask before and after an interview? Must ask questions before and after an interview. So if you're the interviewee, I suppose, what you should ask of the interviewer. Um, certainly afterwards, I would say none. I would just say, hey, thank you. Uh, really enjoyed this. It was a nice, challenging environment. And, you know, I'm glad I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> but, you know, some, some acknowledgement to the interviewer for their time. Um, I would not ask them, I would not say, hey, how did I do? Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. If they're going to, if they're going to give you, if they don't think you did well, they're going to lie. Right? So don't, don't ask it. It just puts them in an awkward spot. You don't want them to lie. Okay. Um, during the, during the interview, you have to ask a lot of questions, but they should be related to the actual material that's being asked. Right. You don't really need to say, Hey, how long you've been here? That kind of stuff. That's reserved for the manager types or the, um, idiots. <laughs> right <laughs> reserve it for them but for the technical things don't waste their time don't waste their time so I, I would say no questions before no questions after other than hi how's it going and at the end thank you keep it simple i would not i have not and i would not recommend asking a lot of questions of them before or after i would not say hey where do you work no i wouldn't bother it's not what they're there for. They're not going to judge you based on that question. I mean, that's a good question to ask, but uh, that's my answer. Do you have any advice on how to be, to remain calm during an interview? Um, so I do it by thinking to myself, I don't have to have this job. I've got a job or I've got a plan or I've got other opportunities. Um, if, if Google works out, man, that'd be awesome. Right? I'd really like it to work out. It doesn't gonna do me any good to be nervous, right? So, okay, forget it. Why bother, right? So I just get in and I just say, you know, I'm just gonna have fun. Because it actually is kind of fun, right? I mean, if, if they're asking you these technical questions and, and you understand technology, you wouldn't be here if you didn't, right? I mean, you're in this computer science program. You're smart people to start with, right? Um, it can be fun to try to, to, try to answer their, their questions. Um, and really, really for me anyways, it's like, I just, you know, what I get, I get. That's the way it goes, right? If this, if this guy turns out, or whoever it is that's interviewing, turns out to be an idiot, well, it's too bad. I just find some other place to work. It's okay. This is not the only opportunity for me. And in fact, sometimes you can bomb one interview and do well and the other three and still get a job offer. It's still it's perfectly reasonable to do. You don't gain anything by being, you know, looking at the clock or worried or whatever. It just doesn't do any good. It's just like, I'm just going to try. That's all I can do, right? That's all I can do. So, yeah. So the question is, is, is this the same process for new graduates versus later in your career? And I, the answer to that is I never interviewed anybody who was straight out of college. Everybody that I interviewed has always been uh, with some job experience. And the, the main reason, at least at Google, was they have a separate inter intern process. And I was not involved in the intern process at all. Because by the time I got to Google, I already had 40 years of experience, right? <laughs> so uh, of software development experience. And they weren't going to have me do straight out of college folks. The, the whole internship um, what was that dumb movie, The Intern? Did y'all see that? Ah, oh, that was insulting. <laughs> I hated that movie. But anyways, because uh, that, that, that's just so unrealistic. But anyways, I didn't. I don't know that process at all. I did see some interns there. And they were sharp. The ones that I worked with, I mean, they, they were stuff. Um, but I, I, was, I never did an interview for somebody straight out of college. 
Um, and obviously for me, that's been a long, long time ago. <laughs> Good. All right, well, thanks everybody. Um, you know, thought that was cool. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll put up the sign in for if you didn't get it, but otherwise there is pizza over there. So feel free to grab a couple slices and thank you all for coming.